Hi, welcome back. Today's lesson is all about rhythm. Rhythm is uh, something that's really important to me and the way that I compose. And today I've asked Ricky here to help me out. Ricky and I play in a band together called Bloke Music. And it really is very focused on unusual rhythms and being able to split rhythms up, divide rhythms, things like that. Um, and it gives you somewhere to go. It's a compositional tool. When you know that you're in a particular ryth rhythmic framework, you can change things about. You can divide a rhythm in two, and you're still in the same framework, creating the same groove, but creating different syncopations. So to start off, we're going to look at simple time and compound time and just the difference between those. It's what people mean when they say the difference between straight and swung. So in simple time, the quarter notes, which is where you would typically tap your foot, so the one, two, three, four, you would divide that into twos and fours, evenly. So one, two, three, four, dividing it by two, you would get eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. And if you divide that by two again, you get 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So you can see in this diagram here, we've got the eighth notes underlined. And that's what people mean when they say straight eighth notes. It has that quite sort of rigid feel. Whereas compound time, everything divides into threes. So what you have really, instead of one and two and three and four and, or more importantly, more than it's different from one e and a two e and a, you would have one and a two and a three and a four and a. So you would still have the same pulse. One, two, three, four. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. And the placement of the eighth notes when when people are playing swung eighth notes is actually on the a and not the and. So it's going to go one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. And it's like a typical blues thing, I guess, or jazz, blues and jazz. They both they both swing. Uh, in blues, they typically call it shuffle. In jazz, they call it swinging, but it's essentially just the same thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's your difference between straight and compound time. Things that we like to, to mess about with in the band is, if we're playing in triplet time, reducing things right down until you have lots of space, uh, but you're still playing even triplets. So it's something that a lot of the, the students in the college where I teach, they struggle to deal with this concept, but it's actually a really simple thing because it's a case of dropping hands uh, is the way that I teach it. So if you think about eighth note triplets and split them over two hands, you would have, if I'm tapping my foot, one, two, three, four, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. And if you just drop one hand and maybe keep pretending to tap it, you've still got the same feel, but you're getting the quarter note triplet. You're getting exactly every second note of those triplets. So in eighth notes, you had right, left, right, left, right, left. But now you're just going to always play the right hand. And what you get is this completely even quarter note triplet pattern. So you would end up with, instead of one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, if you drop that hand, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. And Ricky, if you want to just demonstrate that on the on the kick, on the kick, on the pulse, and then the, playing the eighth note triplets and then dropping the hand. Okay, so that's quarter note triplets. It has quite a distinct sound, and effectively what you're getting is six beats exactly in the space of your four kick beats. So in a sense, it's a, it's a polyrhythm in itself. It's a one completely even rhythm against another completely even rhythm. It gets more interesting still if you then, instead of this all being the right hand, then split your quarter note triplets between two hands. So you have This kind of thing, you've got 
One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. Yeah, so it's going. And now that you've got that over two hands, you can use the same principle again. You can just drop this hand and you end up with three, one completely even triplet really spaced out in the space of four beats. So you've got and so on. It's probably going to sound a lot better when you hear that demonstrated on the kit. So if you do the same thing again, please, Ricky, just reducing that quarter note triplet down. So that's half note triplets. Um, and again, quite a distinctive sound, quite unusual, but it only really comes to life when you start assigning uh, different drums, different parts of your beat to this. You could have kick and snare going just straight on the one and the three, and have maybe the, the bell of the ride or the hat as your, as your half note triplet. And then, you know, because it has all this interest in space, you, you could have a riff basically playing in triplets, maybe accenting mostly the half note triplets, and then filling in little bits of other triplets and you know suddenly you've got an interesting riff idea maybe on your hands um, so let's try it eh? So that's composing things from triplet ideas, basically. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.